air at a pressure of 6 kN per meter square, which is the same thing as a kilopascal, and temperature of 300 Celsius flows with a velocity of 10 meters per second over a flat plate 0.5 meters long. Determine the Reynolds number. So this is our situation over here. We have air coming at 300, 10 meters per second, and with a pressure of 6 kilopascals. And uh, over here we have our flat plate. And we know that if I do a little y-axis over here, and we do a little temperature axis, like so, we know that the temperature over here is always uh, 27, right? So where y is zero, it's always going to be 27 Celsius. That's the temperature of the wall. And as we go further and further away from the wall, the temperature becomes 300 Celsius, which is the temperature of the uh, air, right? So if we're going to draw a temperature profile, it would look, oops, I put the temperature in the wrong axis. So temperature over here, 27, like so, and 300, like so. And where is zero is 27. And then as we go, Further, we would have be something like this, right? Because we know that anywhere over here, the temperature is going to be our 300 Celsius. Anywhere over here, that's going to be the 27, right? But then the question becomes: If I want to determine Reynolds, I know Reynolds is, I know Reynolds is density times the velocity to so u, right? Times the characteristic length. In this case, it's the length of the plate divided by the dynamic viscosity, or if you wish, you can do velocity times characteristic length divided by the kinematic viscosity, right? It's the same thing. Uh, we know that these properties here, they are dependent on the temperature, right? So because they're dependent on the temperature, not all of them, these two, right? Because they're dependent on the temperature, that means that I need to use one of these temperatures, but I can't use 300 and I can't use 27 because I know my air is, will be changing like so as we go further and further away from the wall. So what we do is we take the middle point right here, we take the middle point of the air and we say, we call that the film temperature or the bulk temperature or the mean temperature. There's different names for this. And we take properties at that middle ground and we assume those properties to be representative of the whole system. We do that a lot in engineering, it works, um, for most cases it works, um, but obviously we don't get something as precise as if we were to integrate the properties through the whole thing, right? So in this case here we have um, 300 Celsius and we also have 27 Celsius and we want to get the, the mean temperature so we're going to divide that by 2, right? So that will be Tf for T film or Tb for T bulk or Tm for T mean in your call can call it whatever you please. All right, so in this case, you're gonna get 163.5 Celsius, which is the same thing if you convert to 436.5 Celsius, oh, sorry, Kelvin, All right? So, and this is the temperature in which we're going to go to our table and grab our properties for air, okay? So we have some things already. Between these two equations here, I will prefer I will generally use this one, all right, because in spite of having an extra term, I've noticed that students generally forget that um, they generally forget that this guy here is pressure dependent, but they don't forget this one is pressure dependent because it's more obvious. So, in spite of having one extra term, I'm going to be using those that one with you guys. So we have the velocity already. This guy is 10, right? It's been given as 10 meters per second. We know the length of the plate to be 0.5. All we need to find are these two fellows here, so the dynamic viscosity and the density. All right, so we go down, down to our table here. We see that our properties are changing with temperature and Kelvin, like we mentioned, and we see that our property of interest is between these two values. So we're going to have to interpolate. We can do a linear interpolation to find the values that we're interested in. So we want this guy and this guy, right? If you were going for the other equation, you'd be using this guy, but I'm using these two here. Now, before I move on, let's just read this temperature, this table, okay? So these are, this is property of air at atmospheric pressure. Okay, so this is already a red flag, right? Because we know we are not at atmospheric pressure. We are at a different pressure that was given, whatever that was. And the values of the dynamic viscosity, the conductivity, the heating capacity, and Prandtl number are not strongly pressure dependent and may be used 
over a fairly wide range of pressures. So these guys were fine with them. Let's actually put a uh, check here, check mark here. That's fine. The other guys are not. So in other words, this guy, let's put a, uh, let's put a star here like that. And this guy, these guys will change with pressure. Okay, so that means that we can grab uh, the dynamic viscosity right off the table, but the, the um, density we need to account for the difference in pressure. So what I'm going to do is let's just quickly draw a little table and let's put the temperature over here and I have 400 Kelvin, I have 450 Kelvin and then I have my 430, what was it, 436.5 over here and I'm going to do density and I'm going to do dynamic viscosity. Okay, and then reading off the table, this guy is 0.8826. This guy here is 0.78833. And this fellow here is 2.286. And this is all times 10 to the minus 5, right? Don't forget. And this guy here is 2.484. So if I interpolate linearly, what I get over here is I got 8101, and over here I got 2.43, and I'm going to go ahead and do this so I don't forget. Alright, so it would be as easy as plugging in these numbers, except that this fellow here changes with pressure, and we're not at atmospheric pressure, so we need to account for that. How are we going to account for that? Well, I'll show you guys, I'll demonstrate how we do that, it's always going to be the same thing, but Remember that density is just mass over volume, right? So let's just call all these guys 1. These are the atmospheres. So let's just put ATM here. The atmospheric pressure ones, right? And then we have, we're going to have a different density that we know will change if we change our pressure. So those guys would be 2. Now, first thing to note is that no mass changes regardless of the pressure, right? The pressure does not change our mass. So the masses are the same. So this is the same thing as M1 over V2. But our volume will change with the pressure. And how does that work? Well, if you guys recall, dealing with air, we can assume that will be a, an ideal gas. So that means that if no mass is leaving our system, this is true, right? We're looking at the same temperature. This is 436 for both. We just want to convert the properties at 436 from one pressure to the other. So the temperature is the same. They go away, which means that my V2 equals my V1 times P1 over P2. Right, so let's go ahead and do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this value in here. So this will become M1 divided by V1 P1 over P2. And if you guys note, this, this here is our first density, right? That's density 1, so this is just density 1 P2 over P1. So that means that if I take the density that I found from the table and I multiply by the ratio of the pressures, I can get my new density. Right? So what I'm going to do is, let's go ahead and write our Reynolds here. Let's do that in blue. So my Reynolds is density, velocity, characteristic length, and viscosity. So in this case here, I'll change the density for my density uh, 1. Or let's just put density at one atmosphere, so it's that conf that's confusing. One atm, then uh, velocity, ups, and then pressures times pressure two over pressure one times my velocity, characteristic length, and dynamic viscosity. We have everything, so let's plug in. So we have point one oh, one times. Our pressure. What is the pressure we are dealing with? I don't remember. Let's look it up. It was um, so six kilopascals. Six kilopascals. Let's put that in pascals. That would be six times ten to the third, and that will be in pascals. And let's just put, make sure we put our atmospheric pressure in also in pascals, right? So that'll be one point one. You can Google this if you don't remember by heart. To the five pascals. Right, so these two, these guys in the same parentheses like that. So these two will not influence our units because they both go away. Then, so all of this, just to be sure, all of this, this whole term here, is just the new density, right? Just the 
we're accounting for the change in pressure due to density. Then we have 10 meters per second, right? That's the velocity. 0.5, which is the length of the plate. And our dense um, dynamic viscosity we found to be 2.43 times 10 to the minus 5. All right, this turns out to be, what did I get? 9,867.77, so on, and we can just approximate that. Let's just do approximately eight. Okay, that'll be our answer right there. And then before we move on, let's just check if we did a good job. Let's check our um, units, right? Our, the pascals go away, but let's put it anyway. So we have kilograms per meters cubed. Then we have pascals over pascals, which will go away, cancel out. We have meters per second velocity. We have meters for the you have meters for the um, characteristic length of the plate, and then we have kilograms divided by meters per, per meters per second, right? So kilograms per meters per seconds for our viscosity. Kilograms, kilograms, pascals, pascals, um, one, three, one, two, three, seconds, seconds. So indeed this is, there's no dimensions to it, which is what we were expecting since we know Reynolds is a non-dimensional number. Right? Hit me up if you have questions.